Royal College of Physicians found that 55% feel that their health has deteriorated due to soaring food bills and higher heating costs. Yeah, in fact, medics are reporting that some patients cannot afford to look after themselves. Uh, Dr Frankie Jackson Spence is here with us now. Uh, thanks for joining us, Frankie. First of all, um, oh, we're talking about holistic, all-round health here, physical health and mental health. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I think, you know, where to start with this, the cost of living crisis can affect a person's mental and physical health in so many ways. When we talk about how it can affect someone's physical health, you know, the um, rising costs of heating is going to become a problem in the winter. People, particularly with lung conditions like asthma and COPD, not being able to heat your home properly can contribute to damp, which can make symptoms of these conditions worse. Rising food bills is going to be a big one. Diet does play a big role in our wider health. And I think people will cut costs on food shopping to be able to pay for things like their utility bills. And, and on that, I just wanted to talk about it because, you know, we're not going to suddenly see a nation, you know, we think of sort of famine pictures and people with bones protruding. I mean, people are going to be foregoing food, but they'll be substituting it with, with cheap stuff that fills them up. And, and we'll actually probably see an increase in obesity, would you predict, and, and the associated health risks, so whether that's heart disease or, or cancer? Yeah, and I think there's a bit of a misconception, actually, that eating healthily has to cost more money. Often cooking from scratch, from fruits and vegetables, can actually be cheaper than a takeaway, but people don't often realise that or have the means to cook a healthy meal. And I think another important fact is also the rising travel costs. I've had some patients of my own express concerns to me already about, you know, the rising cost of travel to get to their cancer appointments, to attend scans. Some of these patients are coming to hospital really frequently. So I think that is another implication on, on a person's health as well. Well, you've seen hospitals imposing uh, car parking for patients as well, many hospitals for the first time. And as you say, people going for oncology treatment always just really jars, doesn't it, during a cost of living crisis that the sick should have to pay to park their car to go in for essential mm. life-saving treatment. Treatment. I, I, I honestly, it's one of the biggest bugbears that I have. And I really don't understand why people should have to pay for that. Yeah. And um, what do you make about the, uh, the government delaying its ban on, on uh, advertising junk food and on the buy one, get one freeze for a year? They've come in for a lot of criticism on that. Do, do you think that that is legitimate? Um, I think it's really important that we promote healthy eating behaviours. Um, I actually think that strategies would be better to promote healthy behaviours rather than kind of putting a negative spin on poor eating behaviours. So I actually think the emphasis should be on teaching people and educating people why good nutrition is important and how you do that, rather than making it more expensive to eat unhealthily. And on cooking, because the MP Lee Anderson, he got a lot of stick for suggesting that people should learn how to cook and learn how to budget last week. Is, do you think that that was a... Maybe he didn't make that point in the right way, but did you think that was a legitimate point to make? I think it's important that young people are taught the importance of nutrition from a young age. So it's not necessarily saying a blanket statement that like people need to learn how to cook, but understanding why food's important, different food groups and how we can eat healthily is um, a really complicated issue. But I think education is probably the key thing here rather than actually just making eating unhealthy yeah, more expensive. And just really quickly, because we are out of time, but I just want to talk about how to manage stress because that is mm. what drives not only mental health, but so mm. many other things. Yesterday on the mm. programme, we were talking about the links between stress and Alzheimer's. Yeah, so stress can have a massive impact on a person's health. Stress itself... Um, can cause physiological changes to the body. You can release stress hormones, cortisol and adrenaline, which if prolonged, prolonged um, high levels over a long period can contribute to high blood pressure and the development of health conditions like heart disease, strokes, that kind of thing. So I think it's actually a really important thing to tackle early. Um, I think some tips for people, you know, I can't take away their stressor here. This is going to stay for a while. But having some tools to help manage your stress and cope on a daily basis can be helpful. So recognising your signs of stress early, perhaps you start eating unhealthy or start smoking more or not getting enough sleep. Drinking more. Something. Exactly. Recognising those early to start to do something about it. Exercise is one that I would really advocate for. And people really underestimate the effects of exercise. Not only do, does exercise release endorphins, which makes you feel good and often can help you tackle the day and your stress better, but actually exercise can counteract some of those negative health changes that stress can have, mm. such as raising your blood pressure. Exercise can counteract that. Um, really quickly, sleep hygiene, also really important. Sleep is often one of the first things to go when we're stressed. And, you know, that saying about 
getting a good night's sleep really actually runs true for your health. Yeah. And the last point is talking to someone. You know, this is a crisis, meaning we're all going through this. And just like we did in the pandemic, sometimes sharing your problems and knowing you're not the only one going through this can actually help you cope and manage. It doesn't seem quite as bad. And on that note, speaking to your GP to see if there's anything in your local community that can help support you and manage your stress and mental health worries as well. Yeah, good advice. Thank you, Frankie. Thank you.